Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mike from Forward Observer and Gray Zone Activity. I want to tell you about a book that I started reading last night. I mentioned it on this morning's live stream, so if you didn't catch that live stream, I want to talk about it now. It is called Historical Dynamics, Why States Rise and Fall by Peter Turchin. Now, Peter Turchin is interesting because he's a professor who tries to apply mathematical models to the study of history. And he's come up with this kind of theory of historical cycles. And some people say he's he's groundbreaking and cutting edge. Other people say you can't apply mathematics to history. That's just what they say. However, back in the 1990s, Peter Turchin started writing that sometime around the year 2020, the United States would kind of peak at its... Um, uh, would have a peak of in civil unrest and domestic strife. And he was writing about this in the 1990s. So clearly he has some credibility. So I thought, let me go read his books. And I don't recommend that everyone go out and buy this book. It is an interesting book. But frankly, if you're an average viewer of this channel, there's just better books you could be reading out there. So the first, the first thing I want to talk about in this book that I read last night that I found interesting is the Collins Theory of Geopolitics. It's in Chapter 2. And basically, you had this guy that theorized the rise and fall of empires based on a few different components. So first of all, everything started with war success. Uh, with war success, you have territorial expansion. And as your territory expands, you gain access to geopolitical resources, but also your logistical loads increase, and also your marchland position increases. And basically, we'll go through this very briefly. The marchland march land position is basically the area around which your enemies have to march around your country, right? So as your borders expand, your marchland position expands. There's more borders that you have to guard now, more, more surface area where enemies can invade. Also, the, great, the larger your territorial expansion, the larger your logistical load. Um, this actually ends up dooming a lot of empires. The Roman Empire fell victim to logistical load because uh, they basically outgrew their agrarian tax base. And I've talked a little bit about this before. Um, there are limits to to crop yields and there are limits to which you can tax these farmers. And I talked about in the later years of the Roman Empire, you had you had people living on these estates, leaving these estates, basically just giving them to whoever could afford to pay the taxes because people either couldn't afford to pay the taxes or they just didn't want to pay the taxes anymore. And they literally just walked off their estates. Uh, so you have a limit to an agrarian tax base. Now, the United States is an industrial... We have been previously an industrial society. We're trying to move into or moving into an information or digital society. And as such, there'll be an information tax base. The question is... Can the information tax base sustain U.S. logistical load? And I think with entitlement spending, I, entitlement spending is part of the logistical load. I think that is probably going to do one of, be one of the things that dooms the United States. But obviously, having this industrial tax base has been quite extraordinary for the United States uh, because it really has been what's fueled our just the productivity of having an industrial-based economy. Um, is what fueled the American empire by and large. Um, and then finally, geopolitical resources. Jared Diamond says, explains that probably the biggest reason for the wealth and power of the United States is re resources, because North America is very rich in resources. We have a ton of stuff in the ground that we can take out of the ground and use to and sell and use to expand the American empire. So, looking at logistical load, I think probably the logistical load is is one of the linchpins in in the uh, in the American Empire. But what I really want to talk about is war success. The United States has not won a war in I don't know roughly thirty years, um, and we have two very costly failures in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now I'm a veteran of Iraq and Afghanistan. I spent one year in Iraq two years in Afghanistan, uh, I have a, I've wrapped my head around those problems pretty well. A pretty good, pretty good picture of where we went wrong 
And basically, I think it was just a misallocation of force because we sent a football team to go win a soccer match. Um, basically, you know, you send the military who's really good at killing people and you send them to go do nation building and it just it just doesn't work, right? It's like sending an electrician to go build a house, okay? Um, so given that, according to the Collins model, war success translates to ex- expansion of empire. So can we say that the inverse is also true? War failure means a decrease of empire. And I think in a lot of cases, the answer is yes. So this is yet another reason why I think we are, why I think the American empire is collapsing. And listen, I talked about Sir John Glubb and the fate of empires and a number of other indicators, very interesting indicators, um, as to why I think the U.S. is in a period of collapse. Um, and on that topic, go back and watch my 2019 videos. Um, I talk about, I did a five-part series on Civil War II, but part of that I talk about Sir John Glubb and the fate of empires. And basically what Glubb says is that empires have very distinct phases. And we are in the age of intellect, undoubtedly in the age of intellect right now in the United States. That is the final phase of empire uh, before it goes into collapse. Now, the deal with Sir John Glubb and the fate of empires is he did a study that found that empires last for about 250 years. Okay, that's about 10 generations. And if we start the American empire in 1776, then we're only a handful of years away. Um, if we, I would entertain some, some alternatives as a start date. You know, you might say the early 1800s with the Barbary Wars, the, really the first overseas conflict. Uh, and then you might also say it as late as the 1820s uh, with the Monroe Doctrine. You know, maybe the American Empire didn't truly start till the 1820s. So somewhere in that 50, you know, that 40 to 50 year period, the American Empire started. Uh, you add 250 years to that, we're becoming, we're very close to the that 250 year time horizon, um, which means probably within the next generation or so, the American Empire. I think we're already in decline. I think the American Empire will probably um, end sometime within the next generation. Um, Sir John Glove points out that these empire, empires don't have specific start dates or specific end dates. Um, however, um, we're probably you know easily easily within forty years, probably within twenty years now. Because look, once the dollar goes, like that's it for the American Empire, right? Um, so I want to talk about this next thing. There's a there was a study done by a guy named uh, I don't know Tagapera. And he looked at the phases, the imperial phases. So you have rise, peak, and decline. And he counted the number of uh, the number of centuries. So you know, 0.7 centuries is 70 years. 0.2 centuries is, is 20 years. Uh, he counted the number of centuries for that it took for a uh, these empires to rise, peak, and decline. These phases. Uh, he did that for 31 empires. So what I did is I went and last night calculated the average of these 31 empires, the length of these empires from rise to peak to decline, the end of decline. And it's about 2.65 centuries or 265 years, which is awfully close to Sir John Glubb's 250 years. So I would say, um, I think a lot of weight has been put on this single study by Glubb, but I read stuff like that and it does give credence to Sir John Glubb's argument that empires last about 250 years. Um, to me, this is another indicator that the United States um, is, the, the U.S., the American empire is going to end um, probably somewhere in the next 20 to 40 years, and I would bet maybe it's closer to 20 years. The final point that I want to make is I don't think a war with China is, is likely. I, I think it's unlikely. China doesn't want to get into a war with us. Um, Unfortunately, there may be people in D.C. who want to get into a war with China. But we also look at what's going on with Russia, and who knows if this thing kicks off tomorrow or kicks off in May, or you know maybe it maybe it never does. I don't know. But in terms of war success, I think the United States is still a very powerful country. And yeah, you know we read about all these things going on in the Army and the Navy and the Marine Corps and Air Force and you know all these other and now the Space Force. 
And it doesn't look good. I mean, it really looks like we're going to get our asses kicked in the next war. The Army has said that Russia is a, 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 ta- a tactical near-peer threat uh, in the next, you know, probably 10, you know, 15, maybe 20 years, the army says that the Chinese military is going to be a strategic, is going to achieve military parity with the United States. And I'm very open to the possibility that the United States loses the next war, depending on how it's fought, where it's fought. Um, the United States does have some pretty glaring vulnerabilities. And actually, I know I've been talking about this video for a while, but my next video really will be talking about multi-domain conflict with China, specifically how it's going to affect us here in the States. But my final point is this. We go back to war success. And war success translates to empire expansion. War failure translates to empire decline, empire failure. And if we lose the next war, that's it for the American empire. Uh, That's it for the dollar. Knowing that a war could happen, I mean, it's in a matter of days is probably not incredibly likely, but who knows what's going to happen three days from now. Um, but as we look in the year, as we look at the years ahead, I I do think the likelihood of of an armed conflict increases considerably. Um, and the final point is, if the United States does lose the next war, that's it for the empire. Our our lives are going to be are going to change drastically, especially with regard with, with regard to the U.S. dollar. The loss of the loss of faith. In the dollar, loss of value in the dollar. This always happens. Uh, this always happens when a country gets wrecked in a conflict. Um, so, I would just say, you know, if you're on the bubble of you know thinking about how you get prepared, uh, you know, or should you should you be getting prepared? Uh, the answer is absolutely yes. And you don't need you probably don't need an intelligence analyst to tell you this. But the more I study about his, these historical trends, the more I look at what's going on today, um, the more I look at the trajectory that the United States is on, the more I'm convinced. Guys, your kids or you know, my kids or maybe your grandkids are going to be living, I think, in a completely different country uh, that we know than the one we know today. They may still be living inside the United States. Look, the last empire that collapsed was the British Empire. Okay, Great Britain's still around. Um, the, but they just, their currency is not the world reserve currency. Actually, their currency lost 50% of its value over the 30 years following World War II when the British Empire collapsed. So, you know, is the U.S. dollar going to be going to devalue by 50%? I think a case can be made that devaluations can be much higher than that, uh, possibly even hyperinflation. And I know a lot of people have talked a lot about hyperinflation. I've really discounted uh, hyperinflation as an imminent threat for a long time. I don't think it's an imminent threat, but I think there's a growing possibility that we do have hyperinflation in this country. Um, and look, I, some people may say, "Oh, you know, people were talking about hyperinflation five or ten years ago." Yeah, and they were going to, and they were saying it's going to happen at any second for five or ten years, and they've been wrong, and they'll probably be wrong for another five or ten years, but eventually they may be right. So that's it. Until next time, be well and stay out front. Thank you.